Welcome back. 365 Sports, the triple option, Paul Catalina and Stephen Simcox. And Stephen, I, I'm sorry. I have people texting me. I should have mentioned Sonny Dykes. I think Sonny's a, a good, he would be a good. Yeah. But he's a majority leader. I'm making yeah, Sonny Dykes. I don't think he's up there with those three, but he is an affable guy. He is. He gets along with a lot of people. Yes. Um, you know, I, um, I think we're at a, we're at a nice time in the big 12 for the media in that Dave Aranda is very affable. Mm -hmm. Scott Satterfield's really affable. Um, uh, I love talking to Kyle Whittingham, Chris Kleiman, like right. all those guys are Lance Leipold. Lance Leipold I left out of this and I probably maybe should not have, although he can be a little bit more like kind of grumpy old coach a mm -hmm. little bit, but he's, he's not really that like he's, he's a nice balance. There's a lot of like, you know, of course, Joe McGuire is, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, like a happiness, uh, triple espresso. Uh, you know, that's just what he is. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's like, Sonny's great. Like there's mm -hmm. nobody, look, there's no Gary Patterson's in the league right now. There, yeah. There's no like Gundy's clo the closest one, but he's not, but he's Gundy's not in, paranoid. That no, was Gary's thing was paranoia. Gundy's just going to say what he's going to say. Yeah. And he doesn't really care about the fallout, which yeah. I think is admirable, but we got, we got real football this week, Paul. We do. We do. And, um, my joy uh, will become wrapped up in um, Florida State. 85 scholarship players from Tallahassee, Florida. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they've, they've won their last, like, I think a, like a 15. Well, no, they're not. I for, keep forgetting about that Orange Bowl. Um, they've won their last, like, 15 or reg 16 regular season games, maybe even more. Uh, the Orange Bowl, while it counts, you know, not something I really choose to. Yeah, I don't. To think you don't, about you don't even think about it because um, it's just such a an outlier to any kind of thing that's ever happened in the history of college football. Mm -hmm. But I uh, look. This is a, this is going to be tough. Georgia Tech's better. Like they're better. They're mm -hmm. they're no slouch. Florida State in the darkest times was having a ton of trouble with them. Right. Then they didn't play them forever. And then when they did play them again, like, you know, it just, it's not been, when I was in school, Georgia Tech was one of the better teams in the ACC. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, my freshman year, um, Florida State jumped out to a big lead at home. And then Joe Hamilton was the quarterback at, at Georgia Tech and didn't miss a pass in the second half. And I think Florida State only won by a touchdown. Um, and it, that was the closest one I remember for a while before all of a sudden they just had no answer for him. Um, a few years ago, they lost a last second field goal to them. Yeah. So it's always been a team that's, that's been problematic historically, which I know, um, shouldn't matter. It's always a year to year, but there's always those teams that just are a, a bit of a thorn in your side, um, that you've lost games to, or you never seem to play your best against wake forest has been that for FSU, mm -hmm. you know, but Georgia tech is, is kind of, is kind of in that, that mold a little bit historically for them. I think it's been an interesting game. I mean, it's a it's a very new FSU team, but I think that because their offensive and defensive lines will be pretty good now, their defensive line will not have Jared Verse and Braden Fisk. Like that's that's a loss. But they have like Marvin Jones Jr. is is apparently as advertised. You know, it's easy to get lost in the shuffle at Georgia, right? You know, but um, now that he's gonna he's over there, they've got a lot of veterans they brought in from the transfer portal. DJU will not be Jordan Travis, but I also think that he's about to play in the best offensive system he's ever played in. Mm -hmm. So everybody kind of wanted to blame DJU for the problems at Clemson. And I, I think that we've seen that like he's been gone and Brandon has been issues. gone and they yeah. still kind of have the same issues. So maybe it, it wasn't, it's not, not that he, you know, he's without blame for mm -hmm. what's going on. He's the one that they're playing, but whatever was going on was not totally working there for them. So I think Florida state wins this game. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pause on saying they cover because I don't know anything about this offense like I did going into last year where I would tell you that even before they got Keon Coleman I'm like look Trey Benson was a dude Jordan Travis is it was in the ascendancy mm -hmm. to what he was last year uh, Johnny Wilson was great the year before and then you throw in Keon Coleman and Jaheim Bell to that offense it's like well I don't see what's gonna be a problem sure. for them. And defensively, you could see it the year before, too, coming. And then they added Braden Fisk, and it made them one of the top top defenses in the country. Um, if not, they were not the best statistically, but they were they were up there with Michigan. Like, Garrett, if they had played Michigan, 
mm-hmm. in a in a game. Your opinion. I that's mean, a that's that's a twenty one seventeen game at best. Yeah, it was definitely full probably a one score for both game. teams. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, because I don't know if Michigan secondary could keep up with that receiving core. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would like be that, the question. That was and weapons there um, for sure. And we went through it last year with if you look at the playoff teams, like I thought if like at full strength of the six teams available in the like that were in the final six. You could move those six around, which is what makes the 12 team playoff so much more intriguing in that, yeah, Michigan, you know, pretty much handled Alabama, you know, mm-hmm. when it came down to it. But I don't think they would have handled FSU the same way. But I think Alabama could have handled, you know, Texas again. Mm-hmm. Alabama clearly handled Georgia, you know, so like those things would have been interesting. I think, um, you know, Florida State, Texas, and Washington. If you would put those three in any kind of round robin against each other, I don't know what the, like, mm. everybody played four games against each other, like, over time. Mm. I have no idea what their record would be because they were really very similar teams, like, very, very similar uh, in, in what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, and I think that full-strength FSU last year would have been a, a nightmare matchup for most of the teams because of, like, their their defense and all. Um, and, and Jordan Travis, the way he was playing all year. Um, this year, I have no idea – on that front, I'm very confident in the secondary is still very good, even though they lost uh, Jones and Green. Um, the linebackers, I think, are actually going to be a little bit deeper and better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the defensive line, not maybe as super talented, but they've got they've got dudes. And Patrick Payton is a dude uh, who, who played last year, you know, a lot. So uh, Joshua Farmer's back. They've got depth at defensive tackle. I, I like what they're doing there. I like what they're doing there. But offensive, offensive line, great but I have no idea about the skill positions. Yeah. I was going to say like, who's the, who's kind of the go-to, I guess we'll just have to see what happens. Well, the the thing is they wanted to be Malik Benson, who was the top Juco wide receiver a year ago Mm -hmm. and went to Alabama and then got lost in the shuffle uh, and caught like, he had like a hundred yards receiving last year or something like that. It was, it was not, you know, obviously what they thought. So he's, he, they think he's going to be the number one receiver. And then they've got a bunch of guys who've been there a little bit who are veterans, but they're not going to have, at least out front of, oh, it's it's all of a sudden third and fifteen after a penalty. Let's let's have one of these these dudes go make a mm-hmm. a ridiculous play. They don't have that, so you know that's that's going to be different. Um, Total affiliate running back will be good. They've got other good running backs. They got young. They're they're fine, but um, quarterback and wide receiver are huge question marks for them. So I think you're probably not going to see as high flying an FSU offense early on uh, as you did maybe last year, but. I think they'll still be efficient and good because the, of the coaching. Yeah, I think so, too. And it's always tricky starting the season with a conference game, especially when you're the favorite because you just never know in week one or week zero what's going to happen and, and where your deficiencies are going to be. But, I mean, this feels like a game that Florida State wins comfortably. And I know they got a lot of moving parts and a lot of people that have been replaced on this team, but there's just so much motivation from last year for that coaching staff and for guys that have been around that I feel like focus and uh, those kind of things are going to be an issue, which is really – Honestly, like mental mistakes and kind of silly things like that are the biggest uh, bugaboo in week one when you're talking about teams that should win comfortably if they handle their business. Yeah, I don't, um, I haven't checked the, what the line is today. Um, you know, I know that they were like plus 10 or something like that, mm-hmm. um, or minus 10, I, whatever. Like they were, they were favored solidly, but they're in Ireland. Like, you know, um, I, I want to know how the guys who are coming back respond to the snub and let it motivate them, but not crush them. Right. Because if you keep harping on it. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Vengeance only works in like small doses. Right. So if they're like out for blood, like, I don't know how long that can last Yeah. before the, how sustainable it is, how sustainable it is. Other than, you know, this is a new year. I was really mad about that. I can't wait to go get a chance to prove it. Now that there's a 12 team playoff, you know, I hope we get to play as many games as, as we can, mm-hmm. you know, uh, as opposed to, you know, a committee was like one, two, three, four. Oops. Sorry, One guy guys. broke his leg. So you guys are out. <laughs> and that's the reason and not any other one at all. It's just simply that. Okay. Well, if JJ McCarthy broke his leg, would you have put Michigan out? You know, yeah. If Michael Penix broke his leg, would you have put Washington out? Maybe. I mean, maybe. 
you know, because that would have gotten Georgia in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you just say, okay, so let's, let's say J.J. McCarthy breaks his leg this morning when you're making this decision. Are you taking him out? Are you taking Michigan out? Like, oh, well, Jordan Travis is out. J.J. McCarthy broke his leg, so. So, come on, Georgia, you're in now. Yeah, you're in. I'm like, yeah, well, we, we already told Florida State no, so. Georgia, you're in. Bama, you're in. Congratulations on having broken legs. Hey, congratulations on keeping your key guys healthy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I know. I, I think I think Georgia Tech's going to be fun to watch this year mm -hmm. uh, based on their past few years. But, you know, maybe, that, like, Florida State's depth should get them. But I've watched Florida State teams come off of great seasons and go places and just hit the wall. Right. So, I, I don't know. We'll see. But we got to get to the wheel. Otherwise, yeah, get to it. otherwise, an angel won't get his wings today. Those oh, are the stakes. Yep. The Wednesday wheel. Steven has put 12 teams on the wheel. Well, I yes. Okay. I put all the Big 12 teams. I put the the teams that uh, everyone might not think about as favorites in one. And one. So all 16 teams are on yes. the wheel. Yes. Uh, he's going to spin the wheel, and I'll tell you how they'll win the conference. 